welcome to this festive episode of Rail Story. One of the iconic images of Christmas, and indeed iconic Christmas gifts, is the train set. A toy which formed a staple of many lists to Santa from boys and indeed girls from the 19th into the 21st century. But where and when did it all begin? There have been model railway locomotives for almost as long as there have been railway locomotives, but these were not toys in the modern sense of the word. These early working live steam models are maquettes, or engineering pieces, to demonstrate a principle. One example is this model built around 1811 by John Blenkinsop or Matthew Murray or both of them as a miniature precursor to their full-size locomotives which began running in Leeds in 1812. These models aren't necessarily for fun, although George Stevenson is reputed to have had a model locomotive which could run forward along the floor or a table, stop, run back in reverse before changing direction again. Whilst a scientific model, I'm sure it would have delighted his audience. So whilst the idea of a model railway locomotive is about 200 years old, we need to come forward in time a little to the idea of railways as toys and as something for fun, something with play value. So we now move to the 1840s, to Eastern France, a region steeped in printmaking, and to the English city of Birmingham, the city of a thousand workshops. First to La Belle France. During the 1840s and the 1850s, print media exploded in France, in part thanks to the railways. Cheap commercial prints produced in the east of France around Strasbourg and Metz, known as Images d'Epinal, depicting pretty much anything were ready available on the market, including railways. Cheap prints on paper and textiles were produced, often in bright, garish colours like these. Games such as the Jeu de Chaman de Feu, this example being printed in Metz in 1855, became popular fun for all the family. Cardboard cut-out models of railway subjects, including locomotives, carriages and wagons and buildings, to cut out and glue and make at home, were also readily available. So we see in France the idea of the railway becoming a toy, a plaything. Over the channel in Birmingham, the earliest model locomotives as a toy were also being produced. Known as Birmingham dribblers from their distressing tendency to leave an oily trail of condensed water behind, thus ruining Mater's carpet and earning Peter's wrath or crashing over and spilling the contents of their spirit burner and setting the drawing room drapes on fire. It's probably a model such as this which features in the Railway Children by Edith Nesbitt. Much safer and much cheaper were push-along or clockwork floor trains, either made from wood or painted or lithographed tin plate, and often of varying levels of quality and varying levels of realism. But we still haven't reached the model railway of so many expectant Christmas mornings. And for that, we need to return to France and to the Chateau of saint Cloud outside Paris. Here, in October 1859, what is generally considered to be the first model railway as we understand it today, was built for a very special and a very lucky little boy indeed. The three-year-old Louis Napoleon, the Prince Imperial, the only son of the Emperor Napoleon III and the Empress Eugenie de Montijo. The Chateau of saint Cloud, and very probably its little railway like Napoleon III, was sadly swept away in the Anne Terrible of 1870. Indeed, the young prince for whom the railway was made would die tragically young 20 years later as a British army officer during the Zulu War. The railway of the Prince Imperial took the form of a large figure of eight with a long straight section connected by points where the station was. 
Le Monde Illustre reported, this is my translation. The railway built for the amusement of the Prince Imperial is a real toy as well as a masterpiece of mechanical science. It has been set up in the corner of the private park of Saint Clou. Its track is in the shape of a figure eight, and the curvature of its tiny rails is reminiscent of the surprising curves of the railway from Paris to Seoul. It has a small station, its small viaduct, its small bridges, its small inclines and ramps all recall the real thing. The locomotive, which is about 50 centimeters wide, has six wheels driven by an internal spring, which can be wound up as desired. The gauge was about 20 centimeters or eight inches or so. The prince, together with his friends, would dress up in contemporary railway uniform, the prince as station master, of course, and often under the gaze of his doting parents, the emperor and the empress, play trains for an afternoon. Ten years later, after this little railway in France, the engineer Charles Easton Spooner in Wales had built for him a three and one eighth inch railway in his garden, with his own little locomotive, Topsy, which can be seen today at the Festinog Railway. So now we have the concept of a model railway as we know it, albeit on a very large scale. But not everyone who wants a train set can be born an imperial prince. The first mass-produced toy train sets were produced in the early 1890s in Germany by Märklin and Bing. Märklin had been founded in Bavaria in 1859, the same year that the railway was built for the Pas Imperial at saint cloud and released its first clockwork train set in 1891 at the Leipzig Toy Fair of that year. Merklin is also credited with defining the existing model railway gauges from gauge 1 to gauge 5, the most popular these days being gauge 1 or 45mm gauge and gauge 3 or 64mm gauge. And these became the international standards. Merklin is also credited with devising O gauge or 32mm gauge track in 1895. It is with these clockwork Merklin sets that we see the first standardized mass retail train sets, all built to a common scale, all built to a common gauge, with extra pieces of track, carriages, wagons and locomotives all being available at retail. Other toy companies such as Bing of Germany and Carette in France started producing their own versions, including spirit-fired live steam models. Of course, there were also imitators of these very high-end luxury toys, and these were toys very much for the well-to-do, the very well-off family. And these cheaper imitations enabled model railways to truly come to the mass market. So finally, in the 1890s, we have reached the modern train set, and we have reached the Christmas train set as we would understand it today. Well over a century later, model railways are big business, and sales of electric model trains in the United Kingdom hit a decade-high peak of £28.7 million pounds sterling in 2018. So that's been a quick look at the story of the Christmas train set. I hope you have enjoyed it, and may I also wish you whatever and however you are celebrating this year, a very happy Christmas or whichever religious festival you celebrate, and a hope-filled new year. I hope to see you next time on Rail Story in 2021.